Hey everyone, it's Justine and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the new foil quill from We Are Memory Keepers. And I'm gonna show you, tell you what it is, how to set it up, and then a couple of projects using the quill itself. The other day I tried it out on Instagram for the first time and I absolutely loved the results, so I thought I would share it in a video tutorial. I'm going to be using a Cricut today, but I'm gonna talk about some of the things that it works with as well. So the first thing you're going to get is this little baggie full of tools that say A, B, C, D. And what you need is you need to line it up. You need to grab the proper tool for your specific machine. So you have the A is for the silhouette, the B is for brother scan and cut, the C is for the Cricut, and the D is for the Sizzix cutting machine. So I'm going to grab the C tool since I'm using the Cricut. So I like that it's C for Cricut and it makes sense to me. You're gonna go ahead and open up your Cricut machine and you're going to be using the part that is for writing. So the first thing you need to do is you need to slip your finger underneath the writing piece and pop this little tool out here. So you need to push a little bit firmly on the bottom of it and you can see the bottom of it is a solid surface. So just pull, push fully up. There's no reason to hit the edge or anything like that. The next thing you're gonna do is decide which type of font do you want or thickness in your foil. So if you get the full kit for the foil quill, you're gonna come, it comes with three different pens, you could say. You have three different thicknesses. You have the thickest one, which is this dark blue, and you can even see just by the inside of it. You have the next one, which is similar to, I would say like a 0.7 ballpoint pen. And then this is the thinnest one where it is really, really just a fine, almost needle-like um, tip on it. So I like to use the pink for things like fine details and small writing. For regular size writing and larger lines, you could use the medium. And if you want something really bold, you could switch to the thick. So I'm going to be using the light pink tool today. And so I'm gonna take that C cap that I have here and I'm just going to, it just twists on, super easy. I'm going to place it into my Cricut where I would normally place a pen or my scoring tool. And I place it in here and I close the A flap. The thing I'm also going to do is stick this metal piece directly underneath. And the reason why is because when it heats up, this is plastic and this is applying lots of heat. So of course it may melt it over a long period of time. Now in order to apply heat to your tool, you need to hook it up to a USB port. This could be a USB port plug-in, could be one for your computer, it could be a portable charger, it's completely up to you. So I'm going to plug it into my MacBook. The only thing you're going to want is to ensure that the thing that you're plugging it into is close by, which is why a lot of people prefer to use the portable USB charger. The reason being is as this moves along, this cord needs to go with it, so it needs to be long, and I believe the cord is approximately two feet. So once again, I'm going to stick that metal piece underneath just to ensure that it doesn't melt my Cricut. Then I'm going to head over to my computer to do some design. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to go to design.cricut.com, the regular platform where I would access all of the Cricut images that are available. I'm going to click on new project. And once it opens up, I can insert any image I like, whether it's a custom upload or it's an upload from Cricut. I'm going to click on images in order to choose some of the images. I'm going to type in the word mandala since I really like to make mandalas and intricate shapes with foil. Now I just need to simply choose an image. Remember, the more complex an image is, the longer it is going to take to cut out. 
I'm going to adjust the size according to what I need. I'm going to be working on a standard A2 size card base, so I don't want anything that is wider than four and a quarter inches. So once I have that down to the size that I like, I'm going to click the Make It button. Now I am going to look on my Cricut mat and I can move around my image as I feel like. So it just depends on where I'm going to add it to the Cricut mat itself. So I'm going to choose an area that I think would be suitable. I'm going to click on the continue button. Now that I have my computer all ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and set up my Cricut mat itself. The next thing I do is I need to choose the type of foil that I'm going to be using. The foil quill, the package that I got, came with three types of foil. So I had some silver, gold, and rose gold already included, and they give you a fair amount to get started, I think. So I'm going to measure it to be just, I like to measure it to be slightly larger than my project. That's just me. The foil quill also comes with some washi tape so you can attach the foil down. However, my dog ate my washi tape so I am going to use just some washi tape that I have from at home. The key is here is spending the time to really get a nice flat foil so that it doesn't wrinkle or anything like that. And by putting in that extra effort in the beginning, I think you're going to get the best results there are. So I'm going to start by putting the washi tape around my edges. I'm using Harry Potter washi tape, because why not? Now we're ready to see where the magic comes in. So my Cricut is all hooked up via Bluetooth. You could also hook it up with the USB cord if you prefer. It's all ready to go, it's telling me here. And I've let my tool heat up for five full minutes before I start to foil, that's really important. As far as your dial goes, you want to put it on the setting for which the material you're working on. So I'm going to place mine on cardstock. Because it's going to push the same amount it would have pushed the blade originally if you were working on cardstock. I can now go ahead and I can remove the metal adapter piece here. Just be careful as it may have gotten a little bit warm, although I have to say it's not warm at all at the moment. The next thing you're going to do is you're gonna operate it like you would your regular Cricut machine. I'm going to push the mat into the machine and load it hitting the arrow button that's already flashing for me since it's ready on my computer. Then I'm going to hit the Cricut button to tell it to get going. So it's going to cut, or it's rather, it's going to foil in the same way that the blade would touch this. So we need to make sure that our Cricut, once again, design space is set to draw and not cut. And so it's going to tell it to use this tool instead of the cutting tool itself. By using this one, it's going to apply pressure just as it would your scoring tool or your pens that you would use. And it's going to apply some pressure onto the cardstock is the pretty image on the Cricut. I'm going to let this go by itself for a few minutes and we'll check back when it's all done. So the machine is all finished. I'm going to hit the arrow button here to reject the mat. And then we can take a look at what's happened. So first I'm gonna remove the washi tape and then I'm gonna remove the foil. So you can see how beautiful the design is on the cardstock itself. I think one of the things I'm most excited about is how you can personalize cards. So you could write people's names on them and things like that. So I've had my foil quill now for a couple of weeks and I feel like I can give it a fair review now that I've foiled all the things. So I just wanted to give some helpful tips and tricks if you happen to be running in sort of any issues with your foil quill itself. 
So far, I've foiled, I would say, 20 images, and two haven't turned out. Now, I'm going to talk about cardstock. In my opinion, Gina K Designs cardstock works really well. I have mostly Gina K Designs cardstock, and I went and used a different brand, and it didn't work out so well. I had really thin lines, and I had areas that did, faded a little bit. And so definitely this cardstock, a more heavier weight cardstock, is probably best. However, you can experiment with different cardstocks that you have at home. If you think that you're not getting a good enough impression, you could also set it instead of cardstock to one level higher on your Cricut so that it pushes a little harder into the machine or into the paper itself. Another tip that I would suggest is experiment with the three different types. You can see here I have the thinnest one at the top, the at the bottom that's the medium thickness, and over on the left that is the thickest of the three foil quills that are available. In my personal opinion, I prefer the teal one, which is the one that's smack in the middle. I found the fine line one now and again, as I said, I would get a faded line or it just is so thin that it was a little difficult to see. However, as you can see from the photo, this image turned out really stunning. With the medium, I had the best results and the thickness, thicker one is definitely good, especially if you have any sort of solid area that you'll be filling in. Don't forget as well to always keep your Cricut images on draw. That is another thing that you might have an issue with. If you hit the cut button, then it's going to use the other side of the house and the blade is going to cut instead of using the foil quill. Also ensuring that your foil quill warms up for at least five minutes. If you aren't getting great results, then let it run another few minutes. That might be all it needs. It also says in the instructions not to let it keep going longer than two to three hours because then the results might skew. So it might not be hot enough or it might just need a break. Not all foils are going to work with the foil quill. For me, I used the foil that came with the foil quill first, and then I decided to go ahead and try some of the ones that I bought for my Spellbinders Glimmer machine. And I interchange brands from the Crafter's Companion and the Spellbinders one since the machines function quite similarly, and that is the foil that you want. This foil is a little bit different than the foil that I use with my standard heat laminator. Now the big question is, do I recommend this tool? Is it a must have? Well, I have to say, for me, it was a must have. I love to foil, I foil all the things. I love using my mink foil machine, my laminator, and I love using thermal web products for, that are pretty much dedicated to foiling. So for me, it was another way that I could foil that was a little bit different and allowed myself a lot more creativity because I could pull things from the Cricut database as well as foil things myself that were personalized. And I wasn't able to do that before because I don't own a laser printer. So I was never able to create my own personalized sentiments or names or things like that. So for me, it was a must have in that sense. Another reason why it was a must-have is I thought it was really cool. I like the fact that it works with four different types of machines. I like the fact that it's something new, fresh, and innovative. And I haven't seen too many tools on the market that have been super innovative lately. So it was something new and exciting to try, and I've been dying to get my hands on something new. So that was another reason that pushed me to try this. As far as the results are going as what I'm getting when I'm foiling, I really, really love them. As I said, I did have a couple that didn't turn out. It's not the end of the world. Foil isn't super expensive. And I just gave it a different try by adjusting the thickness or then switching out my cardstock, as I said, worked as well. So for me, this is a really cool add-on to my Cricut. If I didn't own a cutting machine, would I go out and invest in a cutting machine to get a foil quill? Probably not. But since I had the machine already and I was pretty excited to give this a try, and it's also made me fall in love with my Cricut all over again as well. I've been here making all sorts of trays and, and different sort of frames and quotes and all sorts of different things. And so it's definitely pushed me to work more with my Cricut. So I just wanted to leave you with a final boomerang that I shared on Instagram the other day that I thought was so cool is me lifting off the foil from one of my projects. So let me know what you think of the foil quill. Have you got one yet? Have you tried it out? Are you interested in trying it? Or is this something you're going to pass on? It's totally okay what your opinion is. 
And if you have any questions about the foil quill or anything you want me to try out, then please let me know in the video description. I'd be happy to do another video about it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.